All right, welcome to Open Music Sessions. How's everyone feeling tonight? All right, all right. I'm your host, Dele, here to guide you through tonight's Open Music Sessions. It's Friday, February 7th. It snowed like 12 feet out there today, so everything is great. Super stoked that you all were here to make it tonight. Shout out to everyone listening and watching online. Uh, if you're listening on 92.9 FM or on 89.3 HD3, watching on Facebook or YouTube. Thanks for joining us. We've got a great show tonight. We've got the comedic workings of Jared Iwi. Iwi like Kiwi. Let's give it up for Jared. Uh, we've also got music from the Nightshades. Let's give it up for the Nightshades all the way from Fort Collins. Woo! All right, yes. And we also have Monique Brooks Roberts. Fresh off a performance at the Grammys. It's a special treat for you guys. So uh, we're really looking forward to tonight's show. All right, well, without any further ado, let's get into the comedy. You guys ready to laugh? Yeah. All right, all right. Jared, are you out there in the crowd? Where are you? Oh, I see him. Okay, give it up for Jared Ewey. All right. I made a show. Oh, here we go. That amplified. Uh, thank you for coming out. Oh, my God. Thank you. When I first started doing comedy, if it wasn't a sold out show, I was all hurt and like, where were the people? And now I have three kids. And so just the fact that you're here is am amazing. Just the fact you're alive and you're smiling. I think like when you go to a show, not only should they validate the parking, but the babysitting. Like just I get a $40 stamp so uh, Brittany back at home can get paid. And the snow. Was anybody expecting this much snow? No, and you know why? Because the greatest job, perhaps in the world, is a Colorado meteorologist. We don't expect anything from you. All right, we, if you're, there's no job where you could be this wrong all the time. Like if you hired a carpenter to refix your house and he you put the bathroom in the shed, you'd be like, oh yeah, Jesse. But no, a Colorado meteorologist, you can just smile. You know, maybe be nice after all the terrible news. And we're like, we don't care. You know, I lost my wife to some unforeseen windstorm, but I don't care. He's so friendly after all the terrible news. <laughs> Smile, have some nice hair. <sighs> so my meteorological days are done before they even got started. That's the thing. Uh, you guys, God, everybody's, uh, I don't know if you're listening to the radio right now, but we have a very handsome audience. And I'm not just pandering, it might seem like that, but from my point of view, like you, sir, right there, Silver Fox with a camera. <laughs> Holy cow, like, cast of the Love Boat showed up. Very handsome. That's the thing, losing your hair, that's hard. That's a difficult thing. And that's, you don't lose it. You know, it's not like I'm an idiot that just was like, misplaced my plumage, you know? <laughs> like I was busy holiday shopping and I, oh God, well, I guess that's it, kids. I'm gonna look like a disco ball for the rest of my life. That's terrible. That's the thing. Some guys go bald and they look really good. Um, I don't know. Michael Jordan, like, looks good. But Telly Savalas, you know. And these guys, those are guys, and this is what you do. If you see you're losing your hair, you just get rid of it. You know, don't try to, like, earwax some, like, facial stuff up across your head. Don't do, like, a Cupid doll, an angel hair pasta spin across your pate. Don't do that. Let it go. And that's the thing that I found out. Like, sometimes you rip up the carpet and you find a treasure. Like, oh, wood floors, Jenny, what a great place. I ripped up the carpet and I found out, this is very exciting, I have a tiny baby's butt in the back of my head. <laughs> I know, I feel weird even touching it. It was like, how did you get on that offender list? Oh, I rubbed my head. It just, uh, no, nah, it'd be very popular in prison. I've got this extra cleavage, it's, uh, it's very difficult. But you don't lose your hair, it just moves down your body. Like, uh, it's just, if I were to take off my shirt, I look like a frightened cat. Like you say, like my pants, I'm, under, I'm wearing a grass skirt right now, unbeknownst to all of you, but it's just, just a lot to take in. Um, I was going to check daily. It, it, I was going to do five minutes, and then Patima said maybe eight, or oh, I'm just going to go. Is there a clock anywhere, or are you just going to say something? Oh, there we go. So I'm going five. I'm going eight. Okay, I just wanted to check. And I'll tell you why, because I was here a few years ago, and I forgot about the clock. Like, and there, there's a video, it's still online, it's like five minutes of Jared Ewey, and it's like 18 minutes. Like, I just lost my mind. 
I kind of use this as therapy if you hadn't detected that already. <laughs> Talking to the silver fox about hair loss, it's meant a lot to me. Thank you. Um, no, yeah, so that's been uh, difficult for me uh, doing that, getting just uh, going completely by. I see myself on the monitor right now. There's a lot of glare and stuff. It is, um, let's see, it's Black History Month. That's good. Yeah. I know you already know Donald Trump's taking it, uh, like, gonna take credit for that extra day. You know, like he did. And you, some of you, there might be some, I can, I can sense there's a, some disquietude in the room. You're like, is that dude who looks like a thumb gonna start pontificating on Black History Month? <laughs> no, no, but let me tell you a couple of things I know that are history, okay? One, one, one thing that is no longer is white people denying that racism no longer exists. Like, you know, during the Obama years, we'd be like, no, black friend, okay, it's not an issue. I got pulled over and the cop fist bumped me because I look like Billy Joel. So, you know, that, that, no, we know now, we know. If any, if the last few years of very stressful political activity have done anything for us, it's remind us that yes, there indeed is still racism. And secondly, another thing, a history, White dudes. I think white dudes may be done. Like, I'm just, like, I'm on stage right now just basking in it. I'm like, this is it. This could be it. Like, I might, like, I might have as much time as I have for comedy right now. And it's okay. We deserve it. I, you know, I apologize. White dudes, we screwed up at every chance. We did. You know, like when a kid's is being a jerk in second grade and the teacher's like, you just don't know how to play well with others. That's white dudes throughout history. There was no one we didn't meet, we didn't screw with. No one, even other white people. Italians and Irish got over here and they're like, magically democracy. And we're like, that's right, build that railroad for a nickel. I mean, we did not screw with anybody. It's crazy. White on white, I don't even know, is that like a snowball fight? I don't know what the technical term is, but we were never terrible to no one. I'm getting lost in my negatives here. Never terrible to no one. <laughs> and we suck at grammar. Just terrible, gosh. And what I, what I want to do, I just want to be an ally. I want to be an ally. I want all of us to be allies. I'm not even a thousand percent sure what that means, but if you're someone who needs an ally, give me your talking points, and I promise you I will jack up the next 10 years of holiday dinners correcting idiots who say dumb things. Give me your talking points, let me know your culture, your history, and I will pounce on grandma who says dumb things like, I used to be able to call my coworker Buckwheat and he would laugh. I will let her know that that's not a thing anymore and just because she feels weird because other people now have rights doesn't mean that she can be crazy at Walmart. I will let her know. Sorry about that. <clears throat> but I'm ready, I'm ready. Just give me your talking points. And the last thing, the white guys too, like white guys, we're doomed. We couldn't even get it right within our own race, we, like with, with, our, with gender, with, like, with women. And let me, we all know this. We all know this. Everybody knows this. I'm just going to just gonna go ahead and nip. Is somebody's phone ringing during the show? Because, uh-huh. Oh, it's the timer. Am I done? Two minutes. Two minutes. This is going to be a pretty solid two. Okay. Just answer the phone. Just, so, is that it? Is that what the white guys call? That's it? Like, you're, you're done. Sorry, you fed your No, like, here, we all know this, but women are stronger than men. Women are tougher than men. We know this, okay? We know that. I mean, just beyond, even beyond the fact that they can, like, produce humanity, right? That's, like, and that's the thing, too. Like, we, we've spent so much time trying to write off the magic of the, like, you know, the secretion of a human. We just like, oh, yeah, Brenda had another baby. Close your legs, for God's sakes. Yet we'll pay $50 to see a magician pull a rabbit out of a hat. Yet Brenda go ahead and shoots out five kids, and we're, like, mad about it, for God's sakes. And she makes her own food for the kid. I mean, you, if, you ever been to a vending machine that, like, gives you a Snicker bar on accident? You remember that for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, that's a magical moment. I put it in a nickel, and I got a whole soda. Women are like magical vending machines, okay? First, they were 3D printing before it was cool, and they can now just produce food on command, and we don't want them breastfeeding in public. I, there should be some rule where if you see a woman breastfeeding in public, you just, I'm at it, you run and get her a power bar and a sun hat. You just put gifts at her feet and thank her and walk away. Just walk away. 
Like I, I have a six-year-old girl, and we we go to we'll go to school, and there's all these moms doing hair, doing their kids' hair before they get into class, and uh, I'm there, and you can just tell the white dudes we spent so much time oppressing, we never evolved, and women have evolved. That's what they can multitask. That's my theory. This is gonna go like 20 seconds long, I swear. So that's it. But I think I might make a good point. If not, we can discuss it afterwards. But. <laughs> Like, women went ahead and evolved, and dudes, we just never got there because we were busy, like, trying to demean people who could produce humanity. And I'm out there, and, and there's women, and they've, they've got a cell phone like this. They're writing a note on their knee, and they're still doing awesome hair. Like, they're, they're, turning, they're turning little Eva's hair into, like, the seventh wonder of the world. I saw a lady on Crazy Hair Day at the village preschool take a Coke bottle out of the recycling bin and do some stuff with her daughter's hair. It was crazy while she was on the phone like this. And me, I've got every, taken everything I have just to get what I call, it's my one thing I could do with my daughter's hair. I call it the founding father. It's just kind of a, it's just a, it's just a kind of a drunken ponytail. It's like Thomas Jefferson after a bender, just, just a, like a matted animal stuck to the back of her head. That, and that's all, that's everything. And I'm like, I shouldn't wince for you like that. The love child of Mr. Clean and George Costanza shouldn't make it any worse, but that's me. And women are just like, yeah, okay, we got it. All right, enjoy the Leaning Tower of Pizza, honey. It's on your head. My name is Charity. We thank you so much. Thank you so much for the time and enjoy the evening. All right, everybody give it up for Jared Ewe. The love child of George Costanza and Mr. Clean. That, if, if that's a line, I, I'm going to use that. Thank you. All right. Uh, rolling right along, we've got our first band of the night here from Fort Collins. The Nightshades, a blend of sounds of hard rock, metal, jazz, western, and reggae under a large funk rock umbrella. They like to say they're a rock band with a funk problem. Let's give it up for the Nightshades. <laughs> Cool. Thank you guys so much for being here. How you doing? Yeah, we're the Nightshades, a funk rock group from up in Fort Collins, and we're very happy to be here. So we've got a couple originals for you guys tonight, and the first one we're going to play is a song called Riff Song. And this one, this is a song about being a musician and just starting out. I wonder where we got this idea. <laughs> um, and basically, it's just about knowing your worth and um, not accepting any less than that. So this is Riff Song.
Thank you. This next one we're going to play for you guys is called Blamin' Satan. And this is a song about when you're down on your luck, you're going through life, and everything seems like it's going wrong, and you're not doing anything, you're not trying to do anything wrong, and you're just blaming it on the devil. He's picking on you. This is Blamin' Satan. on the base, everybody.
Thanks so much. This next one we're going to play is called Hardly Know. And Hardly Know is it's just what it sounds like. It's a song about someone that you used to know very close, somebody that you used to be in love with, and time goes on, and, and after you stop seeing each other, you're at a place where you hardly know each other anymore. Shadow 
Cool, thank you guys. This next one is called New Reason.
Thank you, guys. All right, you guys, this next one is called The Search. This one's called The Search. And this one's about, this is a song about finding happiness and really the search to get to a place where you want to be. Walking and walking for so long. Well, sometimes I want to stop.
Thank you guys so much. We've just got one more for you tonight. This song is called Jiggada Wagada. I'll say that for you one more time. Jiggada Wagada. Try to come at me, and I'll come back at ya, baby, I'm a rude. 
thank you guys so much. Thank you, OMS, for having All right. us. Everybody give it we up for the Nightshades. Night All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Really ending it with a bang right there. That was in your face. Wow, that was awesome, though. It really is the, like, the mixture of metal and reggae and funk and jazz. What did you guys think? Was that amazing? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, so I guess we all now have a new favorite band. I know I do, so that was awesome. Thank you so much. All right, this is Open Music Sessions. I'm your host, Dele. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in online or over the airwaves. We've had a great show thus far. We had the comedy of Jared Ewe. Jared Ewe, let's give it up for Jared. All right. By the way, my mom thinks you're hilarious. Yeah, she loves it. So, all right. Uh, and then we just had the Nightshades. Super great. We still got uh, Monique Brooks Roberts coming up. Let's hear it up for Monique. Not, not, but before that, uh, we have uh, Organizational Spotlight. Uh, it's something that we do as part of Open Music Sessions. And our spotlight tonight is on the Denver Language School uh, with two campuses in Denver, uh, K through eight education. There's a, ca a campus in the Hilltop neighborhood and a campus in the Curtis Park Five Points neighborhood. Uh, and their mission is to achieve academic excellence and intercultural competence through language immersion and education. Uh, they have a vision of becoming a model of students acquiring superior second language skills as a basis for a high overall academic achievement. They also envision uh, developing knowledge and skills in students necessary to be productive and valued citizens in a culturally diverse and global economy. These students are learning a new language fully integrated uh, and we have a great video for those of you watching online and here in studio and those of you on the radio you just have to listen along with it but you'll hear that these kids have uh, amazing language skills so with that let's take it away to our spotlight The mission of the Denver Language School is academic excellence and intercultural competence through language immersion. What was very valuable was learning about a different culture completely. You know, we're raised in America, you know, we know this one culture, you know, and then coming here we get to learn about this whole different culture, you know, and we get really immersed in it and we get to learn all about it and that's something that not every kid can get. Our program is really unique in that we are an early total immersion program with K through 8 students. So our students in K through 2 learn all of their subject matter in Mandarin or in Spanish. I like how it'll teach you a whole other language and you can like take it into your life and be able to use it more. We've known each other since we were like that tall. We, we know each other really well. We introduce English in the third grade, so our kids are bilingual and biliterate when they leave eighth grade. The results are inspiring. Se siente como nuestra casa. Sí, los maestros que han estado con nosotros y los estudiantes son como nuestra familia. La Escuela de Idiomas de Denver es comunidad, es familia. Y estamos apoyando a cada niño en todos los aspectos de la vida escolar, todos los días. And while language immersion education is unique and research proven, DLS is different. We emphasize cultural and community awareness, compassion, and understanding. This is key in our educational formation process. And we're very excited to be able to offer this language programming to students all over Denver. But we're short on space to bring the full vision of Denver Language School to life. The diverse and rich history of Curtis Park, Five Points, Whittier, and the Gilpin community would be a perfect fit for DLS. I'm envisioning the possibilities at Gilpin 
And I'm excited. I think that there are so many wonderful things that can happen if we're able to be in a new facility and have our middle school continue to grow and thrive. We are Denver Language School. We are Denver Language School. Somos la Escuela de Idiomas de Denver. We are Denver Language School. All right, cool. So that was Denver Language School. Really dope stuff. I mean, I wish I could learn languages like that when I was such a young kid. Uh, I always regret not having a third or fourth language in my repertoire. Well, all right, we're on to our final musical performance of the night. We've got Monique Brooks Roberts and backing band here in studio tonight. Monique just released an album. It is called Free. It is her first solo album. She just performed at the Grammys a couple weeks ago with Lizzo. Let's give it up, Monique Brooks Roberts. Thank y'all, thank y'all. How is everybody tonight? Thank you for schlepping it out in the snow <laughs> to be here. I'm so honored to be here. Thank y'all for having us. As he said, my name is Monique Brooks Roberts. I just got to play with Lizzo at the Grammys, y'all. It was amazing. I'm so you know grateful for the opportunity. And also, I released my first solo project last Friday, which debuted at number 12 on the R&B Soul Charts for iTunes. Thank y'all. So I'm definitely going to be playing some, some music from my album tonight and some covers. So we're going to start with a mashup of one of my favorite tunes, which is Rock the Boat by Aaliyah. And it's into my song, Nightlife. Enjoy.
Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Thank y'all. So this next song is called Tonight. Hey. And so my album, Free, is really about my journey of, um, I grew up in a really legalistic religious household that really tried to keep me in bondage. And music was like the, the bridge to my freedom. And I don't know if anybody in here can relate to that. And even if you didn't grow up in the cultish religion, we all have fears and we all have something that will hold us back from reaching our goals. But if I can stand before y'all today with my violin, having, having played at the Grammys with Lizzo and the host of other things that I do, release, just releasing my album, y'all can do it. Y'all can do it. And so this song is about that special time with that special somebody and not feeling bad about it, you know? It's not dirty, it's not wrong. It's, it's, I wanted to create a song where we could feel amazing about our bodies and amazing about ourselves. And this song represents that and it's called Tonight. And it's sexy and you can buy my album and you can make a baby to it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you all. That was tonight. And, and on my album, there, the next song is called The Morning After. And it's like a string arrangement of beautiful strings as you bask in the glory of what you just did. Wow. <laughs> so this next song is called Love Me. And it's actually love apostrophe me, so it's a play on words, but it's a love letter to myself. And I'm so happy that my sister girl Raja Lari is here because on my album she's singing on it. <laughs> and our another sister friend of ours, Carrie Joy, who is an amazing activist and poet around Denver. So y'all gotta check them out. So this is Love Me. to change his sounds.
Thank y'all so much. I just get lost in the music. I have to shout out my incredible band, right? This man to my right, Mr. Brooks Roberts, he's my husband. <laughs> he's also my producer, my baby daddy. <laughs> but I'm so um, honored to introduce you guys to Mr. Brooks Roberts. On drums, we have Mr. Braxton Khan. <laughs> and on bass, we have Mr. Callum Bear. Do I have any Sade fans in here? Yeah. Like, who's not a Sade fan? Like, if you're not, you can't be my friend, so. But this is actually one of my favorite songs, and it's the one cover that I do on my album. So I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but when you hear it, would anybody mind bringing me some water? Is that okay? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's dry. <clears throat> but um, yeah. So we're gonna do this Sade tune for you. Hope you enjoy it, it's our take on it.
Thank you, guys. That's my favorite Sade song. Who knows the song? I know you know. <laughs> but what is it? What's the song? Yes, everybody knows that song, right? If you don't, go buy it. <laughs> so we're going to end by doing something that is going to be off the top. And it's um, the journey of my album. And the very last song that you will hear on my album is actually the title track called Free. And that was me and this man here just playing whatever came to us. I had no plan for it. So I'm going to do that for y'all right now. I don't know what I'm going to play, but it's going to be very free. So I'm going to end my set with that. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Let's do it.
I was free, y'all. Thank y'all so much. My name is Monique Brooks Roberts. You can catch me on all social media, Monique B. Rob on Instagram. I am selling my album out in the lobby for $10. For a measly $10. I would love for you guys to take it home. I'll go out there, I'll meet you guys, sign CDs. But thank y'all so much, y'all been really dope. Thank y'all. All right, let's give it up for Monique Brooks Roberts. Woo! All right, that was soulful, sultry, inspiring. You see there's people in the crowd who are really moved. I feel personally really moved by that. Um, just a great, great set of performances tonight. Let's give it up for everyone who graced the stage tonight for open music sessions. Jared Ewe, The Nightshades, Monique Brooks Roberts. All right, yeah, yeah, awesome. Fantastic, fantastic. Be sure to check out her new album, you guys. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, and that brings us to the end of our program here tonight. Sorry we have to go. It's been fantastic. Thank you, everyone who braved the snow to be here tonight. Give it up for yourselves one time. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We've got a number of sponsors to thank tonight. We're going to thank Lamar's Donuts. Oh, wait, before I do that, uh, there's a tip jar. Can we pass around the tip jar for, for, for the performers tonight? Give them a little extra, let's go, all right. That'll be coming from the floor director. Uh, yeah, by the way, we've got great sponsors to thank for tonight's show, Lamar's Donuts, Renegade, Sexy Pizza, the Mohe Bohemian Foundation, Crazy Mountain Brewery, Intrepid, Denver Arts and Venues, and of course, all of you for being here, all of you watching, all of you tuned in over the airwaves. Thank you, I am Dele, I've been your host. We'll see you same place again next First Friday on March something. It'll be here. It's the first Friday. Thank you. Good night.